on 21st through 23rd of June at the invitation of His Excellency uh, President Biden uh, and the First Lady, uh, Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, what I would do is give you a, a brief run uh, overall structure of the program outline, uh, try to sketch a bit of context, uh, key elements uh, which currently uh, resonate in the relationship and then go on to speak about very briefly about the program in Egypt. Uh, firstly, this will be Prime Minister's first official state visit to the United States. PM has earlier visited U.S. roughly six times, both in bilateral capacities as also for multilateral events. First about the program, the first leg of his program in the U.S. is in New York, he, uh, which starts on the morning of the 21st with a celebration of the International Day of Yoga at the U.N. headquarters in the morning of the 21st. Uh, you would recall that United Nations General Assembly had adopted a resolution proclaiming June 21st as the International Day of uh, Yoga. Uh, while in New York, Honorable Prime Minister will also meet a cross-section of prominent personalities and leaders. Uh, from there, he departs for Washington on 21st itself, uh, where uh, his program for the Washington leg commences. On the first day of his arrival in Washington, D.C., on 21st, the first key engagement would be an event that is focused on skilling, uh, skilling for future, which essentially would try to bring out the key complementarities uh, and the objectives that both systems seek to promote and achieve in the field of uh, skilling and capacity building. On the same day, on 21st, uh, there is expected to be, uh, there will be a private engagement between President Biden and Prime Minister. On 22nd June, which is the second day of the program in Washington, that's the day of formal bilateral meetings, essentially would have four or five key components. The first component being the ceremonial welcome at the White House. The second component being a set of bilateral meetings between the two leaders as also the accompanying delegations. And the third component is Honorable Prime Minister's scheduled address to the U.S. Congress and the Congressional reception thereafter. And the concluding component for June 22nd uh, would be the ceremonial state dinner uh, hosted by the Honorable President and the First Lady in honor of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi. The day three of the Washington leg, which is June 23rd, uh, Prime Minister's program again would have four or five key components. The first being uh, his interaction, one-to-one uh, -one interaction with select CEOs spread throughout the day. Uh, thereafter, Prime Minister will also be hosted by the U.S. Vice President and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken at the State Luncheon, which is part of the official state visit. Prime Minister will then interact with prominent professional personalities as also leaders from cross-section of the society at an event at the Kennedy Center. Prime Minister's last engagement in Washington, D.C. will be an interaction with the community leaders immediately after the Kennedy Center event, where after the Prime Minister will depart for Egypt. In terms of uh, 
substantive context of the U.S. visit. If I could just take a minute to uh, highlight some of the key components on which we will continue to speak to you in coming days as the visit unfolds and depending on Honorable Prime Minister's interaction day to day during his visit to the U.S. Yeah. The first is a milestone in our relationship between the two countries. You heard Honorable External Affairs Minister say yesterday, it's a very significant visit, very important visit, a visit on which there is a genuine and widespread deep interest in the United States. Two, the visit has, uh, visit is very rich in both form and in substance. Uh, three key component would be the leadership connect during the visit between the two countries. Uh, four, naturally uh, uh, an important element of the visit will also be uh, discussion on the bilateral relationships, the, uh, the uh, line of effort, the uh, objectives that we set for ourselves in terms of uh, looking at next uh, series of transformative agenda items in, in years ahead. Uh, and in that, I guess the effort would also be to build a network in which these new domains of partnership could be properly positioned. Uh, I must uh, mention here that uh, Honorable Sri Narendra Modi ji would be among the rare few leaders, world leaders, to have been accorded the honor to address the U.S. Congress more than once. Uh, clearly, uh, another key context which has uh, always continued is a strong uh, and widespread degree of bipartisan support in the U.S. Congress to the strengthening of this relationship. In um, terms of uh, key elements uh, uh, of the relationship, many of which would uh, feature very prominently during this visit, uh, one of course, as I said, is the, is the political connect at the leadership level, a uh, high level of and very intense level of political exchanges has been one of the key features of our relationship. Just within this month, we have had three very high profile visits from US uh, to India, including of uh, most recently, which is the National Security Advisor of the US, Jake Sullivan. Prior to that, uh, Defense Secretary of the US, uh, Excellency Lloyd Austin. And, uh, we also had the privilege of hosting Secretary of State Blinken uh, earlier this year. The, uh, the second uh, key component which has been uh, a very uh, strong pillar of our relationship has been strong trade and investment partnership. Uh, whether you look at the quantum or bilateral trade touching close to $200 billion or the strong flow of capital on both sides. Three, the technology component. And technology component uh, interfaces with many other domains. So technology itself um, interfaces in the telecom area, in the space area, in the manufacturing uh, domain. Uh, also, a uh, lot of it also as a, as, a, as a triangulation of technology manufacturing uh, and investment. A uh, lot of this translates into that. Uh, within the technology uh, realm, the critical and emerging technologies has been the most recent area of focus, an area which uh, presents itself with uh, really very exciting opportunities for bilateral engagement in months and years ahead. The next key component which, uh, which will also be showcased prominently during the visit is the bilateral defense cooperation. It has been a critical pillar of our engagement. And within that, uh, uh, a new element this year we expect this, during this visit we expect is the progress on defense industrial cooperation roadmap. 
which essentially uh, uh, takes us on the path of how uh, the in defense industries on both sides can partner closely uh, both in not just in the field of co-production, co-development, but also do it in a manner that the uh, supply chains on both sides in this field, the industrial ecosystem broadly speaking in the field of defense could uh, talk to each other, could cooperate with each other uh, far more uh, intensely. Uh, the uh, another key component, always a very vibrant, uh, robust and dynamic component of uh, our relationship, uh, in many ways a strong driver of the relationship is also the uh, uh, diaspora, uh, Prime Minister's interface with diaspora. We have close to 5 million strong uh, uh, Indian diaspora in the U.S. Uh, the, uh, which, which contributes enormously and very richly uh, to the growth, uh, the substance and the strength of the relationship. Uh, another key element, uh, uh, a part of it uh, I, uh, I referred to in my uh, early on in my remarks is the whole domain of uh, skilling and mobility. Uh, in some, some cases independent, in some cases linked uh, in that regard. Uh, those would be the broad uh, outline contours of Honorable Prime Minister's visit to the U.S. in terms of the program, the context in which the visit is taking place, key elements uh, not just of the relationship but also uh, which will uh, 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 feature prominently during the Prime Minister's visit. Uh, moving on to the second leg of Honorable Prime Minister's uh, visit, uh, this would be to Egypt at the invitation of uh, His Excellency Abdul Fateh al Sisi, the President of Arab Republic of Egypt. The state visit to Egypt will be uh, on June 24, 25. Uh, it is worth mentioning here that this will be Honorable Prime Minister's first visit to Egypt and I might also mention that this would be the first official bilateral visit of the Indian Prime Minister to Egypt since 1997. There have been visits in between but they have mostly been for the uh, multilateral or plurilateral events. You would all recall that most recently uh, the Egyptian president had paid a state visit to India when he graced our Republic Day earlier in the year as the chief guest. Uh, at this stage, uh, Prime Minister is expected to reach Cairo in the afternoon of June uh, 24th, where, after, where his first interaction will be uh, 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 with the India unit. Uh, this unit is a, is a uh, select unit of uh, high-level ministers which uh, the Honorable President of Egypt had constituted after his return from India. I think it was in March sometime that it was constituted. So Prime Minister's first interaction will be with this unit. Uh, I must mention here that uh, uh, over the last uh, several months uh, since the visit of uh, the President of Egypt, we have seen uh, intense level of ministerial level political exchanges between the uh, two countries. Uh, Excellent Affairs Minister himself, uh, Honorable uh, Rakshamantri ji uh, and Minister of Environment have traveled to Egypt. Uh, we have had similarly at least three to four ministers uh, from the Egyptian government who have visited uh, India. Even as we speak, uh, a ministerial level delegation uh, led by the uh, chairperson of the Suez Canal Authority is in India. Uh, clearly shows you the uh, uh, extent of very sharp focus that both India and Egypt are placing on strengthening all aspects of their relationship. After that interaction with the, uh, with the uh, India unit, 
Prime Minister will have an interaction with the, with the small uh, uh, Indian community that is there in Egypt uh, and will uh, likely also meet some of the prominent personalities uh, in Egypt. His next day uh, will begin with a visit to Al-Hakim Mosque. It is the 11th century mosque which was refurbished, uh, renovated by the Bora community, Bora community. And the visit to Al-Hakim Mosque will be followed by a visit to the Heliopolis War Grave Cemetery to pay tribute to the Indian soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice fighting for Egypt during the First World War. Prime Minister will have official engagement at the Presidency of Egypt, including bilateral talks with President of Egypt and signing of various MOUs and agreements on that day. Thereafter, Prime Minister would return to uh, India. Just a brief uh, few words uh, on the on the key elements of substance, I just referred to the intense level of political exchanges. Uh, I, I must also add that most recently the, the, uh, the Grand Mufti uh, of Egypt was in India on a very, very uh, successful visit. As you all know, uh, Egypt has also been invited as a special guest during the uh, India's G20 presidency. Uh, this is a very quick reciprocal visit coming uh, just within six months of President Sisi's visit to India. Uh, we do uh, uh, expect and uh, are confident that the visit of Honorable Prime Minister of Egypt will uh, not just uh, uh, ensure continuing momentum uh, to the relationship between our two countries, but will also help it expand to new areas of trade and economic engagement between our two countries. I would stop here, and if there are any questions, we'll try and take them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, um, the ground rules, please introduce yourself and the organization that you represent. I know there will be a lot of interest, so we'll try to also limit the number of questions because Foreign Secretary has other engagements. Let me try to start with you there. Yeah. Uh, Secretary, good morning. Rishabh from Times Now. So, two questions. Uh, one, uh, there are reports that Indian Prime Minister has written to G20 counterparts regarding African Union. Uh, I'm coming to this topic only. I'm African listening. Union uh, thing. Will that be discussed in U.S.? What will be discussed uh, the in the US? African Union permanent membership to G20 that Prime Minister has written. Okay. And uh, so if we can have some details of CEOs uh, who will be meeting Prime Minister in the United States. CEOs who is meeting? A meeting. Uh, Prime okay. Minister is holding meetings with okay. the CEOs. Yes, you have the same question. Next, there was another hand. Yeah, go ahead. Minister. Microphone. Vineet Dixit from Newsgate. Sir, I am interested to know. Will there be an agreement on LCA Mark II engine manufacturing, co-manufacturing here in India? And is GE1. that part of the defense uh, part? Is that the GE1 in India? That's the, that's the, will that be part of the uh, bilateral defense co cooperation uh, production in the long run? And is there a quid pro quo from Americans to us to join NATO? Huh? NATO? Uh, as one of the partners in Quad has already done, uh, the Japan. I I'm not sure. Your statement makes too much sense, but I'll try to believe. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There. Um, Mujib Mashal from the New York Times. Foreign Secretary, just a question of clarification on the Prime Minister's June 23rd schedule. In the last two events, um, the Kennedy Center event is not the diaspora event. The diaspora event is the community leaders event that comes after that. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the sort of the scale of the diaspora event? Is it going to be similar to the one on during Prime Minister's last visit, or is this a more selective interaction? Thank you. Yeah, please. So, Vijayalakshmi, who India TV, se, apne apne vaktavye mein bilateral defense cooperation ki baat ki hai, aur critical pillar ham dono ke rishto mein bataye, to kin kin defense masodo par is visit ke dauran charcha ya hastakshar ho sakte hain? Outcomes ki bojana. Ek last hand, yeah. Yeah, one second. Yeah, 
Ms. Smita Sharma, working independently, Foreign Secretary. Uh, A, we are hearing reports that some members of the US Congress, including Democrat lawmakers, will possibly issue statements on issues of human rights and there are some protests that are being planned during the visit. Uh, has India taken this up with the other side? And the issue of sorry, Myanmar sorry, what, and the increase sorry, in civil no, war. I didn't get your question. What? What is your uh, question? There are reports that people will write letters, we should take it up in advance. That doesn't make sense. Subject uh, that doesn't make sense. Please have a specific question. No, there could be a moment of embarrassment if there are protests are planned and it happens. So, so is the Indian side taking that into account at all? So what is your question? There are planned protests during the Prime Minister's visit okay. on issues of human rights, including some Democrat lawmakers who have suggested there will be issued statements. Okay, fair enough. Does India have a view of this? And on the Myanmar civil war situation, which seems to be worsening, uh, because that's one area where India and US definitely do seem to have a different position. Uh, is that something that's going to come up in talks? Yeah, I think so. we'll hold for that. No, uh, you want to take more questions, sir? Or, or do we? Okay, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, ma'am, go ahead. Vedika Sud from CNN. Uh, my question is, uh, is the Indian government hoping or is the Prime Minister hoping to sign any weapon deals that might reduce India's reliance on Russian arms. Thank you. I'll come back on the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, bunch up uh, the set of questions relating to defense. LCA Mark II, Raksha Sahyog, weapon deal, and put it in a, in a context in which uh, the defense relationship between India and U.S. Is, is, is placed. Look, if you look at the uh, complete matrix of India-U.S. defense engagement, defense partnership, you will find that it is very robust, it is very dynamic, it has all the significant elements that, uh, uh, that make it so important. Uh, uh, we conduct a large number of bilateral military exercises, both bilateral uh, as also uh, regional in nature. Our armed forces of the two countries have all kinds of staff-to-staff uh, uh, -staff engagement that takes place between the two sides. India also uh, is an important uh, uh, deployer of the uh, U.S. equipment and platforms. Some of it are used by India. Uh, we also have uh, significantly uh, an important objective and an effort and an ongoing uh, component of it in terms of what the two defense and industrial system can do, which focuses on research, collaboration, and production opportunities and production cooperation, uh, uh, mainly also under the Prime Minister's Made in India uh, campaign. So if you look at the uh, defense partnership, uh, and I mentioned it in my remarks, that the defense industrial production roadmap that uh, the uh, two countries have been discussing for some time and uh, which would uh, 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 hopefully uh, uh, be uh, one of the very key outcomes during this visit uh, essentially focuses on all aspects of uh, defense co-production co-development and what is important is it also talks about how the defense industrial ecosystems uh, of the two countries could cooperate much better. How the supply lines in the field of the defense industries could also interface uh, with each other much better. So uh, I don't think it would be appropriate to uh, really single out individual elements and link it to a uh, uh, a certain uh, sort of predefined objective in that sense. I think it is important to position uh, each element of the defense relationship uh, uh, very uh, uh, 
correctly in the overall network of defense relationship and also the way defense relationship is positioned in the larger overall relationship. So that's the uh, that's the element of uh, defense uh, which is coming out uh, uh, from the questions. Uh, times now uh, and uh, I think Yeshi your <coughs> ठीक है देखिए जो मैंने अभी संक्षिप्त में यही कहा कि जहां तक भारत अमेरिका के रक्षा सहयोग का प्रश्न है उसको एक सीमित दृष्टि से एक पर्टिकुलर इक्विपमेंट प्लेटफॉर्म के नजरिए से देखने की बजाय उसका फ्रेमवर्क जिसमें हमें उसे देखना चाहिए वो ये है कि भारत यूएस के रक्षा सहयोग काफी व्यापक है काफी कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव है उसके कई महत्वपूर्ण भाग हैं उस पूरे हर भाग को अगर आप देखेंगे तो उसमें जो नया भाग जिस पे हम काफी आ, 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 काफी जोर से केंद्रित हैं वो है कि किस प्रकार भारत तथा यूएस के रक्षा उद्योगिकी से जुड़े हुए जो कंपनीज हैं वो किस प्रकार से एक दूसरे के साथ अपना द्विपक्षीय सहयोग अपना द्विपक्षीय सहकार्य बढ़ा सकते हैं दूसरा रक्षा के क्षेत्र में जो दोनों देशों के बीच में इंडस्ट्रियल सप्लाई लाइन लिंकेजेस हैं इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन इकोसिस्टम्स हैं वो किस प्रकार से एक दूसरे से बात कर सकते हैं और उसका मुख्य उद्देश्य मुख्य तात्पर्य यही है कि किस प्रकार से भारत यूएस रक्षा सहयोग एक इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन इकोसिस्टम की तरफ बढ़े जिससे न केवल दोनों देशों के रक्षा सहयोगों को बल मिलेगा अपितु जो वैश्विक परिपेक्ष्य है उसमें भी दोनों देशों के रक्षा संबंध एक अच्छी प्रगति कर सकते हैं मुख्य रूप से रक्षा को लेकर ये प्रश्न है दी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम टाइम्स नाउ एंड आई थिंक यू ऑल्सो हैव सिमिलर क्वेश्चन विच इज दी द जी ट्वेंटी एंड द सीईओ मीटिंग Uh, Prime Minister, as I mentioned in my remarks, will interact with uh, a prominent cross section of personalities while he is in U.S., both in New York and in Washington D.C. Uh, this would include uh, some prominent CEOs also. These meetings will be in multiple settings. Uh, as and when these meetings take place, uh, the substantive discussions of those meetings. Uh, what exactly is sought? Uh, what exactly is achieved and sought to be achieved during this meeting? We would share with you as we as we go along. Uh, see, on the G20, uh, India's presidency uh, in the G20 uh, has already been um, uh, quite remarkable and unique. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I may be factually sort of slightly. Uh, of the mark here but to my recollection uh, this would perhaps be the first presidency which has taken G20 out really from the capitals to uh, all over the country I mean we have had already roughly what uh, 140 odd meetings spread pretty much all over India the, 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 the number of venues in the cities and uh, uh, places in the country that we have used is, 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 is just uh, uh, shows uh, the extent of commitment that India has to ensure that G20 travels uh, far and wide within the country. Uh, naturally, when uh, the Honorable Prime Minister meets with uh, the U.S. leadership, President Biden, the focus on what uh, India is trying to do in its G20 presidency especially with regard to priorities, interests and concerns of the countries of the Global South, that large chunk of Global South that actually remains unrepresented in the G20, for which the Honorable Prime Minister uh, also held, if you would all remember, the Voice of Global South Summit in January this year. Uh, the idea is to uh, put that on the table and uh, put that on the table with the importance that it deserves uh, in terms of being included onto the G20 agenda. 
naturally in that the interest of the uh, African countries which represents a large section of the global south are important and they would feature in the honorable discussions uh, discussions between the honorable prime minister and the president the I'll come to that I think uh, uh, Smita, if I could just come to your question on the on the U.S. Congress, uh, planned protests, Myanmar, uh, and the situation in Myanmar. Look, when Honorable Prime Minister travels abroad, uh, all uh, aspects of uh, his visit uh, 